we're back at it. Happy Tuesday, 29th day of September 2020. I am Dan Koontz. Five weeks until Election Day. Five weeks until Election Day 2020. And I say bring it on. Sooner the better. Great weather for you today. Another beautiful day. It was gorgeous yesterday. Topped off at 72, just one degree above normal. Today, Yesterday was about as typically normal as you can get. Our high was 72, our normal high would be 71, our low was 47, our normal low would be 48. Right down the middle of the road we go. Uh, we'll be into the 80s for most of the rest of this week. Well, for the rest of the weekend, right, right into the weekend. Big dome of high pressure is anchored right at the Nevada-Utah border, and it's just sitting there, and it's spinning around clockwise. Little worried about maybe some smoke visiting our area, not big, heavy, nasty smoke that we had a couple of weeks ago because the fires are a lot further away, but can't rule out some milky gray kind of skies from the California wildfires later on this week. Forecast details are coming up. News headlines will recap the Seahawks victory over Dallas with, well, an injury update amongst other things. The baseball playoffs begin today. That always puts me in a good mood. Plus, we got an opinion from Mike McNaughty, the obscure holidays, some celebrity birthdays, and today in history, the sun has been up uh, for just a couple of minutes. It went up at 6.58 this morning. Let's see what we got on our Valley View cameras. This is the time of the year, of course, when we have uh, the sun at some beautiful, beautiful angles. Birch Mountain just getting a little, little touch of that early morning sunrise. Uh, as it begins its climb up into the sky. Sunrise this morning, 6.58. Sunset tonight, 6.43. 11 hours, 45 minutes of daylight, and it's going to be beautiful all day long and all day Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Good morning to Charity out there in Kashmir. Beautiful stuff. Nice call, Megan. Yes, Megan gets to decide where we're visiting. She's in charge, and she says, let's go visit, that looks to be the Arondo Rock camera. That's one of the few cameras that we have that's a standalone. Almost all of our cameras that you see here, our PTZ cameras, are on SkyFi Towers. Uh, this is an exception. This is a standalone camera that we put up there for, well, reasons I don't know. Turtle Rock, way off in the distance. The Wenatchee Valley even further off into the distance. Looks like traffic is flowing smoothly on US 2, US 97 in the Orondo area as people head on up maybe to Waterville or Chelan or vice versa. And, of course, Lake Antiat to your right, camera number three. Uh, that looks to be Lake Chelan from the lower butte, I'm guessing. Hey, hey, wow, good stuff, Dan. I am correct. That is the lower butte camera pointed up the lake. As you can see, the sun is just starting to bathe the foothills around the Manson area. Good morning, Lake Chelan. Beautiful time to visit Lake Chelan. I mean, you can go out and do some boating and some recreating and the sunny and warm afternoon weather, and you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of crowds. You don't get all that choppy water that you get in the height of summer with all the jet skis and the boats and what have you. Things are much quieter at Lake Chelan. It's a good time to go if you like it nice and peaceful and quiet as the fall colors begin to turn. And camera number four. Oh, we're back out to, is that, uh, that uh, uh, what am I looking at, Megan? That's the Coles Corner camera, so that is in the general vicinity of the Lake Wenatchee area. This, uh, we, we saw this yesterday with the Lake Wenatchee camera. Uh, again, when you have an extreme temperature variation in a very short area of elevation, if the water temperature is cold and the, warm, and the temperature of the air is warmer or vice versa, you get things like that. Those low, those low clouds, those low foggy uh, embankment that will burn off as, the sun as soon as the sun starts to actually kick into that area there, all that stuff will burn right off and you're in for another beautiful day to the northwest of us. Good morning, Coles Corner. I don't know how Coles Corner got its name, so if you do know, let me know, all right? Uh, what do we have for you from Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, who gives your home a hug? How about that? Again, that high pressure is just sitting there. It's gonna be sitting there all week long, a long period of warm and dry weather. All of these temperatures that you see are above normal. By the time we get to Thursday and Friday, and maybe even Saturday, we could be bumping up against record high temperatures, but again, uh, there are some uh, wildfires in the Central California area, you know about that. Uh, it looks like at this time, most of the smoke is gonna be way up there. There's two things that are going on. Of course, the fires are a lot further away than the fires that we had over Labor Day weekend, 
and also the fires were producing considerably less smoke than the fires that we had. But there's going to be some light smoky skies. Again, the smoke's going to be about five to 6,000 feet above the surface. So it could be a little milky or a little gray late in the day, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, probably not going to have any smoke get anywhere near the ground, and we'd like to hear that. So it, it could get a little hazy. Could it be some for spectacular sunsets, though? So we'll keep a close eye on that. We'll know more about possible light smoke coming into our area by this time tomorrow. So that's your forecast from Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. As simple as it can be. Beautiful early fall weather. Six minutes after the hour, your Tuesday morning headlines are next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Pibus Public Market's motto is where community meets. Whether it's people, you know, enjoying an event or they meet a colleague for coffee and whip out their laptop and are able to actually do work here, having quick and reliable Wi-Fi is one of the things that makes Pibus such a great community hub. It just contributes to the welcoming place that we want Pibus to be. I'm Allie and fiber keeps people connected and that's what Pibus Market is all about. Why run all over town when you can get the financial services you need under one roof? The location is 521 Chelan Street right here in Wenatchee. Accounting solutions for success. Insurance from trusted choices. Real estate, the power of the edge. Personal, professional, preferable. It's all right here. Get the edge on your financial needs. Now available in Chelan as well. Get more information at augustedge.com. Beautiful Tuesday morning, sunshine, 50 degrees, lower 80s today, mid 80s, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right into the weekend. Maybe some light smoke from the Central California wildfires visiting us late in the week. Here are your headlines. Two more people in Grant County are reported to have died from COVID-19, bringing that county's total to 20 deaths from the virus. The Grant County Health District reported Friday that two Quincy women, both in their 60s, had passed away. One of the women had underlying health conditions, the other did not. There are currently 15 Grant County residents hospitalized with COVID-19. Wenatchee police are still trying to sort out the details of what exactly happened, but a man stabbed multiple times in the 1000 block of Mission Street. This happened just before midnight on Sunday night. Wenatchee police captain Edgar Reinfeld said the man was transported to Central Washington Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Two men, by the way, are being sought. Police received the call at 11.49, and there are a lot of questions left to answer, Reinfeld said. Uh, apparently, a man and a woman were confronted by two men after a firework was apparently set off. Reinfeld said the confrontation turned into a stabbing. That's when the two men fled, and they're still looking for those two men. A stretch of Bender Road in Kashmir closed yesterday because of a sinkhole. The Chelan County Public Works Department said the roadway was closed from the intersection with Tigner Road to the intersection with Reagan Road. The sinkhole is at the hairpin turn on Binder Road. Half a duplex in Ephrata suffered extensive damage in a fire on Sunday afternoon, but firefighters were able to stop it from spreading into the other half of the duplex. The fire in the 500 block of D Street Southwest was fought by afraid of firefighters with the assistance from Grant County Fire District Number 13 cause of that fire under investigation. The only scheduled debate between the two gubernatorial candidates in our state is coming up on October 7th. The incumbent, of course, is Democratic Governor Jay Inslee, his challenger Republican Lauren Culp. That debate is being sponsored by the Washington State Debate Coalition. The debate will air here on the NCB Live channel beginning at 8 o'clock. It'll immediately follow the debate that evening between vice presidential candidates Mike Pence and Kamala Harris. On October 22nd, the coalition will host a debate between the two lieutenant governor candidates, Marco Lilius and Denny Heck, both Democrats. The Forest Service over the weekend lifted its ban on campfires in the Okanagan Anchi National Forest and at the same time reopened trails that have been closed for weeks because of the Chickaman Fire. Mike Davis of the Forest Service said shorter daylight hours, cooler temperatures, some rain and some snow in the Cascades led them to lift the campfire ban. He warned, however, that there is still a risk for wildfires and the fire season 
is by no means over. The Chickaman Fire has been burning in a remote hillside north of Plains since late July. Now, because of limited access, seasonal snow and rain were needed to completely extinguish it. With thousands of acres of grazing land in Okanagan County destroyed by wildfires this summer, a lot of ranchers are attempting to move cattle to better pastures, feeding them scarce hay. And last week, the Department of Transportation truck delivered a load of apples to cattle from the Townsend Ranch on Cameron Lake Road. The Okanagan County Department of Emergency Management was on hand to capture the feeding frenzy that ensued, in, that, uh, that, uh, ensued. take a look at this video. That's pretty spectacular stuff. One more video to show for you on this Tuesday morning. Employees at the State Department of Natural Resources don't just use fire trucks. They also build fire trucks. The department says the 20 or so trucks that they build every year saves the taxpayers a lot of money. So, so this is a, a, a plasma table. It's done all by air and electricity. It'll cut stainless material. Uh, we can do copper. Uh, it'll cut all the way up to an uh, inch and a half. So it'll cut an inch and a half thick steel through about 40,000. For the machine, the new plasma. Um, so in, in one year's build cycle of a 20, 20 truck build, um, it, it basically paid off uh, keeping all of it in house instead of having to outsource it at uh, um, sublet. Our deck sheets, they come in a custom cut. Uh, they start as a five by 10. So I'm able to build extra products that go on our trucks that fit in that scrap material that we never even used to get. So we're able to build basically an essential, a free part that goes on our fire trucks. Uh, what we're looking at here, this is a fire deck that goes on our fire trucks, uh, the water tank that has the foam tank built in, and the basket on top that we build. Uh, the basket carries a lot of the firefighters equipment. Uh, they store a lot of their items up there, extra gas, things like that. But this is the, the start, basically, of a fire deck for a fire truck. Tremendous cost savings, yeah. By the time we're all done, by the time we buy the, the cab chassis and build this deck, we're about $125,000 into a truck. Uh, if we were to go purchase that truck on contract, they're over $200,000. Life cycle on a fire truck is 10 years, so as they cycle out to keep them efficient and on the road all the time, we replace them. Um, it takes about 160 man hours to build a fire truck. So 
quite a few man hours go into building 20 fire trucks every year out here. Uh, and that's that's probably our biggest project every year is making sure we've got new fire trucks to, to keep the, the DNR force going. Pretty cool video from the DNR. That's what's making news on this Tuesday morning. At quarter after the hour, we'll be putting together another newscast for you tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Grant Olson in the anchor chair, Eric Grantstrom handling sports. And with a preview, here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll have all the latest local COVID-19 headlines. Under tons of sunshine, north central Washington temperatures this week will be 10 degrees above normal. I'll have your complete weather forecast, and Eric Granstrom will be here too with a look at all the day's sports action. That much more coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Do you have a news tip or you just want to drop us a note? We try to give you a lot of different tools in the toolbox. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com, news at ncwlife.com. If you go to our Facebook page, you can drop us a note via Facebook Messenger. You can contact us via our website at ncwlife.com or just pick up the phone and give us a call at the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. We're going to take a break. Exactly how banged up are the Seahawks after their big victory Sunday against Dallas? We'll give you the details and we do sports in one minute. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Badger Mountain Brewing is proud to announce the grand opening of our new kitchen. Come try out our new menu featuring fabulous steaks, prime rib, gourmet burgers, and seafood grilled up by experienced meat master, Chef Galen Goodman. To complement your mouth-watering meal, Badger Mountain Brewing features 14 in-house crafted beers, an alcohol-free root beer infused with 11 different herbs and spices, three different ciders, and a great wine selection. Don't miss out on the best meats and the best brews down at Badger Mountain Brewing, located at 1 Arondo Avenue across the tracks from the Pibus Market. Back at it, 18 minutes after the hour on a beautiful Tuesday morning. Let's talk about sports through three weeks of the NFL season. Yeah, the Seahawks are a little, little banged up. Of course, they've already lost Marquise Blair and Bruce Irvin. They're gone for the season. They both tore... Their ACLs, five Seattle players suffered slight knee injuries in their victory over Dallas on Sunday. And in addition, strong safety Jamal Adams has a groin injury. If there's a silver lining, though, Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll says most of the injuries don't look particularly serious. It, it, the, the initial reports we have back from our, the MRIs and the tests and all that is that none of the guys that got banged up got banged up seriously you know where it's going to take a, a long time um, we're going to have to go through the week and see how it goes but uh, no surgeries or any of that kind of stuff uh, are upcoming at this at this point um, so we, we might have dodged the bullet a little bit in, in that um, uh, so but I, I can't you know I, I can take you through it but it, really it's going to be get back on Wednesday see where guys are uh, see what they can handle I, th I think uh, you know, Jamal's going to have a hard time with the, with the groin strain. That's going to be hard for him. We'll see if, if he'll be able to make it back. Uh, Chris looked really good this morning. Postic looked really good this morning. Um, we'll, we'll find out from Damian. Damian, you know, did better. He's got a chance. So it, it, it's just going to take us all week long to figure it out. And uh, But we, we're really pleased that the reports that came back, there was nothing serious. It's going to be like guys are out for a long time, and you have to think about, you know, IR and stuff like that. That did not happen. Three games into the season, the Seahawks have built up huge leads, and that requires their opponents to throw the ball a lot more often just to get back into the football game, and that's led to some pretty bizarre statistics. The Seahawks' defense is dead last in total yards per game. They are dead last in passing yards per game and passing yards per play and in first downs allowed. Coach Carroll said they've allowed way too many deep balls, and they have not converted on chances to turn the ball over. Well, we've had the, the first thing I'm frustrated by is we've had maybe five interceptions in our hands, you know. Um, 
Quinn had had three in, in the first two games. Uh, I think I think uh, Trace had two and, and Shaq got one, you know, so they've been on on the ball for some of the plays, but everything looks looks doesn't look right to me when we get the ball thrown over our head twice in the same game. You know, that, that's not supposed to happen. And you, you, you don't remember seeing that very often against us. And it's, uh, uh, you know, really good execution on their part. Both balls were, were really well thrown and all, but we should we should be on both of them. So uh, I'm, I'm never going to be satisfied until, you know, the deep ball is not part of the game. Seahawks uh, have the longest road trip in the NFL. They'll be heading down to Miami to take on the Dolphins Sunday at 10 a.m. One of the more memorable and at the same time forgettable plays from Sunday's game, you remember this, uh, when uh, Russell Wilson threw to D.K. Metcalf, the second-year wide receiver, beats the Dallas State defense deep. He's going to go into the end zone, and then, well, the 63-yard touchdown pass that wasn't the defender, of course, knocking the ball out of the end zone at the one-yard line through the back of the end zone. Dallas recovered the ball. For the touchback, we have seen this before, and not just in the NFL. Coach Pete Carroll says that is a hard lesson to learn. It's it's such a hard lesson uh, to for him, you know, to have a guy knock a ball out of his hands on a, just an exquisite play, you know, just throw and catch and execution, and everything, protection, the whole thing was gorgeous, and then we give them the football. I mean, that's just a terrible play for us to, to have to endure. But the lesson learned will 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 you know will help everybody, and, and fortunately we overcame it and it didn't you know uh, wreck the game for us. But um, that's his, you know, that's, it's a terrible play. It really is because he's got a touchdown, just finished it off, and, and, and he, he started celebrating too early. We celebrate in the paint is what we talk about. This is something we talk about all the time. And so it really hurt that, that you know, we weren't able to execute there. But um, the fact that he came back, of course he did. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's such a great competitor. He's not going to let something like that hold him down. He's, he's pissed. It's like everybody else. And, and uh, you know, but he bounced right back in the end. There he was available for the game winner and, and made the play. Metcalf made four receptions at 110 yards. Of course, got the game-winning touchdown with a minute 47 left to play. Quarterback Russell Wilson says as soon as Metcalf had his little oops in the first half, he went to Metcalf and says, be ready for your next opportunity. You know, there's no excuse for it. He knows that. Um, you know, he, he wants to be the best in the world, you know, and, uh, you know, he, the good thing about him, you know about him, is he'll never do it again. And he'll be ready to the next opportunity that comes to him. And, you know, like for me, you know, he's like a little brother to me. You know, we were so close, you know. And so to me, you know, uh, you know, I, I told him, I said, listen, you know, there's another opportunity. When, when it comes your way, you're going to make the play. You know, and just speaking life into it, just knowing that something great's going to happen. Sure enough, he makes the game one touchdown, which, um, you know, worked out for us. Fellow receiver Tyler Lockett had a good game, a career best three touchdown receptions on the day. He says he knew Metcalf would bounce back. Uh, yeah, I don't really remember what I said, but I just, I think if I said anything, I was just like, hey, keep playing, like you all right. You know, things like that happen. And like I said, like you said, I was really happy that he was able to score that last touchdown to be able to, to give us that game winner. You know, I think it allows a lot of people to kind of let that slide, let it go. We'll talk about it. You know, that's a learning experience for each and every person and as a receiver, whoever touches the ball. That's something that we can all just kind of think about and just be reminded that it's not over until we score and the rest blow the whistle. But ultimately, I'm really happy that he scored that touchdown. I'm really happy that he made that touchdown to allow us to win the game. And I'm just happy that we found a way, honestly. That was a tough game. By all accounts, from his teammates and coaches, DK Metcalf is determined to make his second year in the NFL better than his first. And they expect the mistake that he made on Sunday to provide a little motivation for Mr. Metcalf. Again, the Seahawks in Miami to take on the Dolphins on Sunday morning. Let's talk. Baseball, it's playoffs. The American League Wild Card Series begins today. All eight teams will be playing game one in their best of three series. It begins this morning. First pitch at 11.08. You got the Twins and the Astros. You can see that game on ABC. At 12.08 on ESPN, you got the White Sox and Oakland. The Blue Jays and the Rays will start their series in Tampa. Game one, 3.07 first pitch. And then Later on this afternoon, it's the Yankees and the Indians in Cleveland, 408, first pitch on ESPN. Nationally begins tomorrow. Uh, you got Atlanta, Chicago, San Diego, and LA hosting. Following the wild card rounds, the higher seeds, the remaining playoff games in the World Series will take place in neutral sites in California and Texas. World Series will be held at the new stadium in Arlington, Texas. By the way, game two 
of the AL Wild Card Series will also be tomorrow, so you'll have eight baseball games to watch. On Wednesday, it should be declared a national holiday, but that's just me, and those are just some of the games that people are playing at 26 minutes after the hour. Today's obscure holiday, it's National Coffee Day. Yep, happy National Coffee Day. Now this morning, it's a little cool, it's only 50 degrees, so hot coffee this morning, iced coffee. This afternoon, uh, people all over the world enjoy a good cup of joe. Uh, the origin of the holiday itself, nobody seems to know, but we do know the history of coffee, or at least the urban legend of coffee. According to the urban legend, Ethiopian highlands, the highlands in Ethiopia, there was a goat herder who discovered that when his goats ate this certain fruit off this certain plant, the goats got all wired. They were all running around. Hey, what's up? So uh, he decided, hey, if it does that to goats, what happens to humans? Well, it turns out the same thing. Of course, for many, many years, they didn't brew coffee. They just chewed on the beans, and that got you, got you up and going. And then, of course, it went from the Arabian Peninsula to all parts of the Middle East, to Turkey, to Syria, to Europe, to the New World. And there you go. How much does the average American spend per year on coffee? The average American? $1,092 a year is what the average American spends on coffee. That's a lot of coffee. Uh, citizens of Finland drink more coffee per capita than any other country. They'd love their java in Finland. And back in 1932, the Brazilian National Olympic team was going to go to L.A. to participate in the Los Angeles Olympics. They didn't have any money, so they took a whole bunch of premium Brazilian coffee beans and they threw them on the ship, and on their way up to L.A. from Brazil, they sold the coffee beans on the way. That's how they paid for their trip to L.A. Happy National Coffee Day. I'm a cream and sugar guy myself. Nice cup of joe, get you going. All right, uh, 28 minutes after the hour. World War I dominates today in history. It was on this date in 1918. Bulgaria said, we're out. Bulgaria, one of the one of the powers alongside Germany, and they said, you know, I don't think we're going to win. So we want out. They signed the uh, uh, Salonsia armistice and basically said, okay, we're going to, our 60,000 man army, we're just going to go away. Bye bye. Germany, you're on your own. Germany wasn't real happy, but Bulgaria said, we're out. This happened uh, 102 years ago, September 29th, 1918. That very same day, September 29th, 1918, the Hindenburg Line broken by the Allies. This was the big roll of the dice. Enough was enough. Trench warfare, nerds to it. Let's just go for it. And so the French and the British and the Americans and the Canadians, can't forget about the Canadians and all the Allies, said, we're going for it. We're going to go and see if we can bust the Hindenburg Line wide open and it worked and it was the beginning of the end for germany in world war one and in fact on that very same day 102 years ago september 29th 1918 there they are that's paul van hindenburg on the left the kaiser kaiser wilhelm in the middle and eric ludendorff the three leaders of the german supreme army uh, the Army commanders, Hindenburg and Ludendorff, got together with the Kaiser, and there they are looking at it and said, well, here's what's going on. And Paul van Hindenburg and Eric Ludendorff told the Kaiser, um, don't think we're going to win the war. We should probably open up negotiations for an armistice, Kaiser Wilhelm, because it's not looking good right now. And they did, and it eventually happened. So all happened on the same day, September 29th, 1918. And this is something you don't see too often. Normally, when planes collide in midair, that's like it. You know, the planes are going to go down. Uh, on this date, uh, back in 1940, it was 80 years ago today, two Avro Anson fighter planes collided in the middle of the air over New, New South Wales and Australia. They ended up locking in together, and they landed safely with one plane on top of the other. Uh, the upper plane that you see there, it crashed into the lower plane. The engine stopped. They cut into the fuselage, but the engine stopped. But the, 
but the engines on the lower plane kept running. So the pilots, the crew of the upper plane, they ejected, they got out of there. The crew in the lower plane couldn't eject. They're kind of, there's a plane on top of us. They actually flew around uh, the airplane. He realized with the flaps and the rudders, he might be able to control it. Made an emergency landing. All the crew members survived. Yes, a mid-air collision. Both planes landed together. You don't see that very often. Happened 80 years ago today. Let's do birthdays. The singing cowboy. Gene Autry, a singer, actor, businessman, guy made a ton of money. He made a ton of money doing what he did, which was make country and western uh, songs and movies and television specials. And then he took all of that money that he made and he invested in Southern California real estate, radio stations, television stations. He eventually owned the California Angels for many, many, many years. Uh, back in the saddle again, Rudolph, the Red Nose, Reindeer, and the most amazing fact of Gene Autry, the singing cowboy, he is the only person, the only person to be awarded five stars in all five categories at the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's got a star for movies, a star for television, a star for music, a star for radio, and a star for live performances. Nobody has ever done that. Gene Autry, born in the state in 1907. We miss old Bum Phillips. If you're a pro football fan, Bum Phillips, born in the state in 1923. He, of course, uh, coached the Houston Oilers back in the 70s and in the 1980s. He coached the Nolan Saints, probably best known for his folksy humor, among some of the Bum Phillips' best quotes. There's two kinds of coaches, them that's been fired and then that's going to get fired, and I've had the privilege of being both. I never scrimmage against the Oilers. I never scrimmage Oilers against Oilers because Houston isn't on our schedule. <laughs> and when he asked about Earl Campbell, the great running back, the Hall of Fame running back for the Oilers, Earl Campbell could not finish the one mile run in day one of training camp and the reporters asked him about it and Bum Phillips said, when it's first in a mile, I won't give it to him. The legendary Bum Phillips, born 97 years ago today and nobody cuts the killer, Jerry. Lee Lewis is 85 years old today. Alongside Don Everly, he is the last surviving member of the inaugural class of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 1986. Who would have thought that? Jerry Lee has outlived them all and he's still playing rock and roll. Great Balls of Fire, High School Confidential, Breathless, what's made Milwaukee famous made a loser out of me Jerry Lee Lewis going strong baby at 85 happy birthday nobody can cut the killer Jerry Lee Lewis also one of the greatest piano players ever 33 minutes after the hour we have a brand new opinion from Mike McNaughty you've never seen it before I guarantee it it's coming up you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel Is search engine optimization right for my business? Maybe. Studies show the first and second search results get 50% of all the clicks. But you have to fight national chains to get there. If the user has to scroll down to find you, tough luck. You could hide a dead body on page two and the whole zombie apocalypse on page three. Or you could spend less and get an ad in the Impact Big Print phone book, giving local businesses a chance to shine. Impact directories. Bigger print, better book. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. Sorrento's restaurant at Chelan Cellars provides a unique dining experience. 
The dining room provides a spectacular view of the Lake Chelan Valley. Lunch and dinner are served daily, and the weekend brunch is something that must be experienced and won't soon be forgotten. From the menu to the music, nothing is overlooked. At Sorrento's, you will always be impressed, especially when you discover how close and how affordable luxury can be. It's all within your reach at Sorrento's at Chelan Cellars. Our country is currently facing an opioid epidemic. It's estimated that 130 Americans die daily from opioid overdose. To help turn the tide on this epidemic, Confluence Health has partnered with local pharmacies and health systems to offer a dozen medication take-back boxes in North Central Washington. The first place children are exposed to medications is in the home. Second, disposing of medications properly is good for our environment. To learn more about the medication take-back boxes, please visit confluencehealth.org slash opioids. This November, the lives of millions of unborn children are at stake in elections across our country. Before you vote, find out which candidates support life and which support abortion, the taking of an innocent life in the womb. Remember, an unborn baby's heart starts to beat at just six weeks. Wenatchee Right to Life supports life from conception to natural death. Join us. Vote for life. Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. So a friend posted uh, on Facebook that Jesus was a socialist because he told us to feed people. Well, I mentioned that there's a difference. Jesus told me to feed people. He didn't tell the government to make me feed people. So of course, some people jumped on my case for being G, self-righteous, blah, 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 whatever you, I, I don't know. But look, you can attribute Jesus to your economic philosophy or your political, political beliefs right or left. You know, but it's not a question about whether Jesus is on your side or not. It's a question of whether or not you are on his side. This is my Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house, fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, serving North Central Washington, is proud to offer the finest heating and cooling air quality products along with prompt and professional customer service since 1984. Regardless of the temperature outside, Arctic is here for you. Arctic offers a variety of services, residential and commercial heating, air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. Building. It's in our blood. Building something out of nothing. It takes heart, grit, and hard work. At One Way Construction, our crew is our family. With decades of contracting experience and our in-house design team, we bring a unique perspective to building. We know that if we work together, we are capable of reaching heights that are impossible to reach alone. The possibilities are endless. Hello everyone, Dr. Glenn Hoey here, voted world's best medical professional. The reason why is that we get to the root cause of the problems that concern you the most. So join us, call us today, 662-1302. When you or your family's physical health is compromised and you need medical supplies, Value Plus Medical Supplies where you turn for solutions. All of our staff has a medical background assuring you the highest quality of customer service. Stop by Value Plus today. Forty minutes after the hour, the sun's been up for just about 40 minutes, although we've cooled down just a little bit. Outside of our studios, we were at 48 degrees. We were at 50 degrees when this show began, but the warm-up's going to continue. We hit 72 yesterday, right around normal. We'll be warmer than that today. In fact, we'll be in the lower 80s today. 
And we can very well set record high temperatures <clears throat> for early October. Come Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll do the forecast details uh, one more time before we cut you loose on this Tuesday. But first, another look at what's making headlines this morning. Two more people in Grant County have reported to have died from COVID-19. That brings Grant County's total to 20 deaths from the virus. The Grant County Health District reported Friday that two Quincy women, both in their 60s, had passed away. One of the women had underlying health conditions, the other did not. There are currently 15 Grant County residents hospitalized with COVID-19. Wenatchee police still trying to sort out exactly what happened, but a man was stabbed multiple times in the 1000 block of Mission Street. This happened just before midnight on Sunday night. Wenatchee Police Captain Edgar Reinfeld said the man was transported to Central Washington Hospital. Non-life-threatening injuries were told, and two men are being sought. Police received the call at 1149 in the evening. There are still a lot of questions to answer, but Reinfeld said, Apparently, a man and a woman were confronted by two men after a firework was apparently set off. Reinfeld said the confrontation then turned into a stabbing and the two men fled and the two men are still wanted by law enforcement this morning. A stretch of Bender Road in Cashmere closed yesterday morning because of a sinkhole. The Shaline County Public Works Department said the roadway was closed from its intersection with Tigner Road to its intersection with Riggin Road, the sinkhole, is at the hairpin turn on Binder Road. Half a duplex in Afreda suffered extensive damage in a fire on Sunday afternoon, but the firefighters were able to stop it from spreading into the other half of the duplex. The fire in the 500 block of D Street Southwest was fought by Afreda firefighters. Assistance from Grant County Fire District Number 13 cause of that fire under investigation. This is going to be one scheduled debate that we know of anyway between the two gubernatorial candidates in our state. It's coming up on October 7th, a debate between the incumbent Democratic Governor Jay Inslee and Republican challenger Lauren Culp is being sponsored by the Washington State Debate Coalition. The debate will air on this very channel, the NCAA Live channel, beginning at 8 o'clock again on October 7th. It will immediately follow the debate that evening between the two vice presidential candidates, Mike Pence, and Kamala Harris on October 22nd. The same coalition will sponsor a debate between the two governors for lieutenant, the two candidates for lieutenant governor, Marco Lilius and Denny Heck, both Democrats. The Forest Service over the weekend lifted its ban on campfires in the Okanagan and Wenatchee National Forest. And at the same time, they also reopened the trails that have been closed for weeks because of the Chickamauga fire. Mike Davis of the Forest Service said shorter daylight hours, cooler temperatures, and some rain and snow in the Cascades led them to, the, to lift the campfire ban. He warned, however, that there is still a risk for wildfires in the fire season. It's definitely not over. The Chickaman Fire has been burning on a remote hillside north of Plains since late July. Because of limited access, seasonal snow and rain were needed to completely douse that fire. With thousands of acres of grazing land in Okanagan County destroyed by wildfires this summer, a lot of ranchers are attempting to move cattle to better pastures, feeding them scarce hay. And last week, the Department of Transportation, they delivered a load of apples to cattle from the Townsend Ranch on Cameron Lake Road. The Okanagan County Department of Emergency Management was on hand. They captured the feeding frenzy that ensued. Take a look. <laughs>
Yeah, it's pretty neat drone footage, again, courtesy of the Okanagan County Department of Emergency Management. And finally, employees at the State Department of Natural Resources don't just use fire trucks. They also build them, and the department says the 20 or so trucks that they build each year, big savings to the taxpayers. So, so this is a, a, a plasma table. It's done all by air and electricity. It'll cut stainless material. Uh, we can do copper. Uh, it'll cut all the way up to an uh, inch and a half. So it'll cut an inch and a half thick steel through about 40,000. For the machine, the new plasma, um, so in, in one year's build cycle of a 20, 20 truck build, um, it, it basically paid off uh, keeping all of it in house instead of having to outsource it at uh, um, sublet. Our deck sheets, they come in a custom cut. Uh, they start as a five by 10. So I'm able to build extra products that go on our trucks that fit in that scrap material that we never even used to get. So we're able to build basically an essential, a free part that goes on our fire trucks. Uh, what we're looking at here, this is a fire deck that goes on our fire trucks, uh, the water tank that has the foam tank built in, and the basket on top that we build. Uh, the basket carries a lot of the firefighters' equipment. Uh, they store a lot of their items up there, extra gas, things like that. But this is the, the start, basically, of a fire deck for a fire truck. Tremendous cost savings, yeah. By the time we're all done, by the time we buy the, the cab chassis and build this deck, we're about $125,000 into a truck. Uh, if we were to go purchase that truck on contract, they're over 200,000. Life cycle on a fire truck's 10 years, so as they cycle out to keep them efficient and on the road all the time, we replace them. Um, it takes about 160 man hours to build a fire truck. So quite a few man hours go into building 20 fire trucks every year out here. Uh, and that's, that's probably our biggest project every year is making sure we've got new fire trucks to, to keep the, the DNR force going. Now you learn something new every day. And that's what's making headlines, 48 degrees. Again, beautiful day today. We had a, the, 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 things really started to change on Sunday. It was pretty cool, a little rainy, a little windy on Saturday. Sunday, we turned the corner. Monday was gorgeous. Today is gonna be even nicer. We're gonna be near record high temperatures. It's gonna feel more like June than October. Complete details are coming up, but first we'll take a three minute break and come back with more cameras around the valley. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. Currently, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is open for dine-in and take-out. Owner Justin Hefner and his staff are just as excited as you to get back to their regularly scheduled full menu, music, and poker. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is serving a limited menu for lunch and dinner, dine-in, or take-out. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. This is Caitlin Hedersheet, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. From local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. Fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else. Get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle. Starting under $1,000, Green Motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family. Green Motion e-bikes is located right downtown on the corner of Palouse and Wenatchee Avenue. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. Yeah. Are you just sure wish she was here? Yeah, no kidding. Little four point. It's a nice coconut. Solid fish. Watch the Northwest Outdoorsman with Richie Harrod Saturdays and Sundays at 6 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 4.30 p.m. on the NCW Life Channel. At Harvest Valley Pest Control, we know you are committed to making your home and business a healthy and pest-free place. 
Hi, I'm David. Give us a call and we'll give you a firm price over the phone and schedule a time that works for you. We will do an in-depth 30 point healthy home or business inspection and craft a customized plan of action designed specifically for your pest issue. Give us a call or visit our website today. Need a break from reality? Central Washington Water has a showroom full of possibilities with service and support to keep you soaking and giving you the absolute best ownership experience. Free flow plug and go spas for as little as $45 a month. There's a hot tub for everyone at Central Washington Water. Shop screen to screen, in store, or a backyard consultation with one of our wellness team members. Central Washington Water, your water experts. We're back at 52 minutes after the hour on a gorgeous, gorgeous Tuesday morning. This is one of the reasons people like to live here in North Central Washington. We get to have days like this and we get to have a string of days like this. We got the time. We thought we'd take another tour around North Central Washington. Once again, the cross camera does the honors. When we began this program 52 minutes ago, Birch Mountain was the only piece of real estate you could see that had a little bit of sun bathing down but now the sun is starting its climb up high into the sky and everybody is getting bathed of course obviously uh with the sun just creeping over the east wenatchee bench east wenatchee pretty much still in uh, in shadow but the wenatchee side of the columbia river is looking good some trees are way ahead of the leaf turning as compared to others my tree is completely totally green hasn't even changed anything but there's a couple of trees that are the same kind of trees and uh, they've already started to turn, even though we got a lot of sunny and warm weather. It's those cool nights, overnight lows in the 40s, that make the leaves kind of go, ooh, man, winter is coming. Gorgeous view from the cross camera. Can't wait to see what Megan has decided to do with our cameras. As she, I'm sure she moved them around. That's the Arundel Rock camera. When we started this show, it was pointed down towards the Wenatchee Valley. Now it looks like she's pointed it exactly the other way, up north, towards the Chelan Valley. That, of course, is... Lake Antiette. Lake Antiette is the Columbia River, but the Columbia River isn't really a river anymore. It's just a series of reservoirs behind dams, if you think about it. That's kind of the case. I wonder if that was the deal that they did, that the, the deal that they cut with uh, the, the old town of Antiette when they put in Rocky Reach Dam and they began to fill it back up again, and old Antiette had to get moved to its current location. I wonder if they said, okay, we're going to bury your old town in water, so in exchange for that, we're going to name the body of water Lake Antiette. Deal? I wonder if that's what that was. I honestly don't know. It was in the early 1960s, which is a blur to me. Good morning to our friends at Lake Antiat, camera number three. Gorgeous view from Lake Chelan. That is the Lower Butte camera. And again, Megan zipped it right back around to the other side. Again, PTZ, that's the acronym, pan, tilt, zoom. Chelan itself is to the far right. You can see the three fingers. Complex. I don't know what the latest is with three fingers. Are they going to develop that? Are they not going to develop that? There was court cases and environmental review and this, that, and the other thing. Right now, the three fingers just seems to be sitting there. You can also see the marina. Beautiful view. And good morning to our friends at Lake Chelan. This is a great time to visit Lake Chelan right now. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be warm. The lake is placid. Get out and enjoy the beautiful Lake Chelan area. And finally, camera number four. I think we're off to Cole's Corner again. And there we are, Cole's Corner. As you can see, the fog is beginning to burn off. That, that area was completely uh, covered in thick fog early this morning. Again, the humidity is at its highest. You have a huge temperature variation between the water and the ground and the, and the air above it. That's why the fog gets forming. But now that the sun is beginning to warm up the planet in the Cole's Corner area, you can see the fog is beginning to disperse. And in another hour or so, it'll be gone altogether. It is an absolutely gorgeous beautiful area that we live in here in north central washington no question about that two minute break and then the weather forecast that's going to make you smile it's coming up you're watching wake up in Anchi valley on the ncw life channel are you frustrated because you feel like you aren't getting the internet speeds you pay for one of the most common ways to test your internet connection is called a speed test these are free and easily located on the internet and can tell you how fast your internet is. However, for certain reasons, these tests may not always be accurate. 
A speed test shows you how fast a file can be downloaded to the computer you're running the test on. However, there are many things that can affect the speed of that download besides the speed of the internet going into your home. A few of the things that can affect your internet speed are poor Wi-Fi signal, other wireless signals interfering with the wireless signals coming from your router, other devices in your home draining your bandwidth, your computer or phone running apps programs in the background that you aren't aware of, slowing your entire device. Any of these things can slow down your internet. Your internet is like water flowing down a pipe. There's a big pipe bringing internet to your local area, and a smaller pipe coming off of that bringing internet to your home address. Your router is just another pipe that brings the internet inside your house, and every device inside your home is like a pipe connected to the router. Just like with water, if any of those pipes along the way are too small for the amount of internet that needs to flow through for a family, the flow for everything down the line will be much slower. It's a lot like trying to push all the water going into your house through a small straw. Also, again, just like with water, if everyone in your home is using the internet at once, any individual device may not be able to receive the full flow of the internet. It's like your whole family trying to drink out of that small straw all at once. If you're struggling with internet that is slower than expected, make sure that all of the devices that your internet flows through are working correctly and check all devices in your home for background programs that may be using the internet. If everything still appears to be working correctly, contact us and we'll be able to help. All right, gobs of gooey good sunshine. There's a big ridge of high pressure that's just sitting right over the Nevada, Utah border. It's well entrenched. It's just going to sit there all week long and right into the weekend. It's spinning around clockwise. It's shoving all the bad weather out of here. Let's take a look at your forecast one more time for the National Weather Service. It's easy for us. Boy, Grant's got nothing to do today, our local weather forecast dude. 83 today. Now, that's considerably warmer. We hit 72 yesterday, so it would be considerably warmer today. But again, it's uh, the high pressure is just so well entrenched, it's going to bring all this warm air up from the California area. Speaking of that, we want, we can't, we got to mention this. Of course, as you know, there's uh, wildfires in Central California, and they're thinking that we're going to get a little bit of smoke in our area, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, but we're not talking anything like it was earlier in the month when the fires were much closer to us. These are fires in Central California, so they're thinking the smoke will be about five to 6,000 feet above sea level, way up there. So kind of milky, kind of grayish clouds, passing grayish, milky, you know, smoke is possible Wednesday and Thursday. We're not going to have any bad air quality. Remember that really terrible air quality that we had for a long time. So the skies get, may get a little gray because of some smoke coming up from the Central California area, but probably, not, well, it's going to be nothing like we had uh, for the first couple of weeks in September. That is it for us. Everybody have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.